All right. Oh. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Bro, come on. <laughs> Give me just a second here. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Willie Kwan, and I'm a senior at Seven Links High School and the shepherd for the Bethel Two House Church. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've given a lot of testimonies, but I'm more than blessed and thankful to be up here sharing a testimony today, not because I'm more special or a better Christian than others, but because I'm a sinner who deserved nothing but instead was given a grace beyond measure countless and endless times. I don't even know how I'm up here, but it's all God. In my testimony today, I'll be sharing just what I've reflected on as a shepherd and some words of encouragement to the next generation. Growing up and even to this day, I would say my family is my biggest inspiration as they've, de as they've demonstrated to me the diligence of a true servant of God. Not only that, but I've watched so many different leaders lead house church for me, and I looked up to all the upperclassmen as they would lead so flawlessly. They created such a loving and addicting environment for me, and I believe I matured and grew spiritually mostly through house church ministry. Uh, to be honest, before I officially became the shepherd of, uh, for my house church, I thought I had what it took. After growing up and uh, watching so many, uh, so many different leaders uh, lead house church, I thought I could fill that same role. But let me tell you, uh, my biggest struggle in shepherding was my pride. God saw this pride that I had and he humbled me good. Becoming the shepherd for the newly merged Bethel 3 and Bethel 4 was very difficult. Uh, when I was new to shepherding, I remember being unable to get the respect of my members, uh, being una unable to make house church social and, in and interacting, and just being unable to lead the way God wanted me to lead house church. I found myself constantly being frustrated and annoyed at my members. And Whenever I wasn't fulfilling my responsibilities, they would be quick to judge and criticize my shortcomings. Uh, but through these struggles, I learned that instead of asking God to change my members and help them behave the way that I want them to, I must ask God and change my heart, and that I can love my members no matter how much they disrespect or annoy me. You don't truly love your members if you always ask God to change them. Philippians 2, 2-1 says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, that make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. Thus, when you learn to love your members for who they are, God will bless the relationships of your members and your members, and your members will begin to love you back. As a Christ follower and a shepherd, I try to become more like Jesus, but one thing that has been fronting me from being more Christ-like is undeniably my pride. Pride is considered to be the greatest sin it makes it hard to give up one's life completely to the Lord because we think that we can control our lives and make the smartest decisions. Pride makes it hard to forgive others and therefore it can ruin relationships. Pride blocks us from seeing the bigger picture as we put all our focus into ourselves. And I learned that it's not all about you. The Bible tells us in order to overcome pride, you must clothe yourself with humility. You must have a more modest or lower sense of your own importance. You might think we have a... Uh, we, we might think we deserve a better life, but actually, uh, we don't deserve anything. Everything that we have right now um, that is good comes from the grace of God. The next thing that I want to exemplify um, is many things that being a shepherd means uh, living a perfect and flawless life. And that if you don't do all these things, then you will not be a good role model to your members. But no, God doesn't call us to be perfect people. He wants us to be faithful servants who clings on to him over and over again, no matter how many times it takes. Leading as a shepherd made me realize that the only way up is actually to go down. Be a leader who doesn't act like he's perfect, but one who, but, but one who proclaims that he is as sinful as everyone else and is also in desperate need of God's grace. You may think that looking like this good person in the eyes of others will get you respect, but it's actually in your vulnerable attempts and sharing your struggles and failures that you'll foster a true sense of love and community. No Christian is better than the other. We have all committed the same huge sins, and we have all been forgiven by the same huge God. During my years of learning and navigating as a leader, I've come to the realization that your nature of leadership should adopt the role of a gardener. And I love this. 
I used it in my college essay. BT dubs. All I gotta say is howdy. <laughs> As a leader, uh, you plant seeds in your members and envision uh, the potential and gifts that they can all offer. Um, by carefully nurturing them, you establish an environment for them to grow and experience a true belonging within a community. You are a gardener who sacrificially uh, commits and remains resilient in times of change, realizing that in the end they will all beautifully sprout. Rather than solely finding peace and joy during the planting and harvesting seasons, you are equipped with hope and trust during the stormy and dry seasons. You recognize that all seasons of life, the highs and lows, are all needed for growth. Uh, despite all the wilting and pain and the brokenness of each individual, there is a blessing in what is broken. What they once were dies and is replaced with something new and beautiful. You are a gardener who discovers the joy and the growth and reaps the blessings from the transformations. And so now, before I end off here in my time in SNY, I just want to say a couple of thank yous. Um, to Bethel 3 and 2, I'm sorry about the countless times I've uh, failed to properly lead you all. Even when I failed, you all still forgave me uh, of my failures and loved me no less. Thank you for giving me a time of joy and laughter after a hard week of school, and it was a privilege serving with you all. Even though I was the one who was supposed to serve you all, uh, thank you for serving me and showing me uh, to grow and mature in my faith. I'm very proud to be called your shepherd, and I can't wait to see how God moves in every one of y'all's hearts. And to Daniel, a.k.a. DJYP, the next shepherd for our house church, uh, let me tell you about this guy real quick. Um, he's got a beautiful voice, he's got a beautiful heart, and he's got beautiful grades. Um, <laughs> so, someone needs to set him up or something. But uh, thank you for taking uh, such great care of my house church. Um, when I couldn't. I see so much potential in you, and I have no doubt that you'll be able to move this house church with God in the right direction. Uh, to PJ and Jamie, thank you for your servitude, your compassion, and your unwavering commitment to making this ministry a family. Through my seven impressionable years, I never realized the immense passion and love that my youth pastor had for me. Uh, from entering the sanctuary as a reluctant little sixth grader to leaving as a completely changed senior, I can confidently say it was because of them. Uh, lastly, I just want to thank you uh, to SNY. I'm truly going to miss this place, and I'll cherish every memory that I've made here. All the mission trips, the retreats, um, house churches, and Sunday service, I'm going to miss them all. Thank you for showing uh, me the power of love and unity of a church. And thank you guys so much for everything. Thank you.